Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's, Dow's flat. NASDAQ is down eight. S&P's off three and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Good morning, guys. We've got some interesting uh, market swings going on in some of our Asian markets today, huh? Yes. Oof. There's, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, the, we're kind of laying there in the euro and the pound, but uh, there's no doubt that, you know, that, that yen, I mean, you know, as you were saying last week, it, it got over that 109.39, but it hasn't stayed, thank God. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, today they had the, uh, the Royal Bank of New Zealand that surprised everybody by not cutting rates a quarter point. So that pushed that market like a balloon underwater. It's kind of funny. The New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, looks just like the Hong Kong dollar, U.S. dollar, or the U.S. dollar, Hong Kong dollar trade, where it's just an explosion because they're buying dollars in Hong Kong right now. Interesting. We were just talking about Hong so, Kong, man. That place is in trouble, man. I mean... They are. They yeah. are. It's, and the currencies, it's kind of funny. Like, I heard you guys saying how the euro and the pound are very quiet today. Um, and it's kind of funny because you really you have this situation where, um, you know, we have our, in the U.S., we have the impeachment procedure that's beginning right now. Everything's quiet, you know, and then we have the tariff thing that now is coming maybe on hold again. So that doesn't seem to be phasing anything. But you have the New Zealand dollar that, that's exploding. Um, and you have the, uh, the U.S. dollar yen and the U.S. dollar Swiss that look like they're starting to get kind of heavy. And I think that they're going to start to point the way of the dollar as well. Yeah, no, I can see that. I can see that. The thing that's amazing, and you just brought it up, is that the market's shaking everything off, man. You know what I mean? It's just like the dog just shakes it off and says, okay, what? nothing else is new, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, and, and because we know what the election's in uh, a month, right? Sure. Over in Over Europe, right? Yeah. Yes. You in know? England. You'd think we'd see some movement out there, but I, but I can see the, I like the, I like the aspect when you're talking about that. It might be the the franc and the yen that basically tell us where this thing's going, man. Yeah. I, th I think so. And it really surprises me the most is, like, we have the, the British pound, which that market never really has a small range, even when it's boring and, and is slow. And the range has gotten so tight. And we have the euro, U.S. dollar. Like, how can the Swiss have more volatility than the euro, U.S. dollar? That just doesn't make, make any sense to me. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And with Teddy saying that, this is cool, folks. Because when you have anomalies like that, it's like you have to pay attention to them because that just doesn't stay there yeah. for a long period of no time. No way. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. There's a volatility play coming up in the pound, and I think it's going to be to the upside. I think the dollar is going to finally have a nice little turnaround over the next couple of days. We have some big numbers. I think the CPI is not going to disappoint tomorrow, um, but we have Powell's speech also coming into this week. And then we also have the impeachment stuff. So I think the dollar, for, it's, it has no reason to rally right now, except for obviously currencies like the Hong Kong dollar or the Chinese yuan. You know, those are, there's a reason there. But then you look at some of your lesser majors. Um, you have the New Zealand dollar. This is a big paradigm shift for that currency. So this is probably more than a one-day rally. Then you have the Australian dollar. It looks like it may have bottomed because of this New Zealand dollar shift. So that's going to give that, those bulls a little bit of a lift. You know, and then with the yen right now, if that's, you know, rallying and the dollar's falling apart against that market, well, I think the dollar index as a whole is going to probably start to leak out a little bit over the next couple sessions. Yeah, I just brought up that Australian dollar. So this thing, you know, what's amazing is that, boy, if you, if you live in some of these uh, other countries that your currency fluctuates a lot, man, you have, absolutely have to be a currency expert, don't you? <laughs> You got to watch a lot of things, that's for sure. <laughs> it seems it, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm just looking, you know, the, the Australian dollar, we got, what, 82 cents, you know, two years ago down to 68 cents, right? You know, I guess if you, if you don't, if you, if you do business out of the country, you definitely have to that's watch That's for it. sure. Yeah, you know, doing business in the country, a little, little bit different, but pretty, pretty mm -hmm. amazing watching how this whole thing is just shaking out. And then, you know, um, the Mexican peso, not that we, we're trading that, but it was intriguing yesterday that Mexican peso bottom line took off. Mm -hmm. And you talk about a range, man. I was looking at this range because the range is pretty amazing. So, I mean, it's, 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 keep going today, too. I mean, you know, yesterday we had a low of 19. 
11 mm -hmm. 1945 when you bring this back it's like man this this is like a, a range bound deal that basically like what 21 to 18 yeah, it's pretty much the range i think it depends on when the vacationers are going and, and coming and going the most okay yeah <laughs> really <No. laughs> you know what i mean but I'll you're just, right but the I'll... pace has been pretty much in a range now for a couple of years like that Listen, 18 we, we have we have listeners that are right on the border that live both places and they seem to do, have done very well in, in the aspect if they can keep their eyes on the peso versus the dollar <laughs> You know, because the bottom line is that whether it's real estate, you know, uh, sure. Carlos, so, you know, oh, going back and forth, you're talking about monster money when you, yeah. you know, got a, a move that's only two or three percent. But guess what? Two or three percent in the real estate market ends up being a big oh, number. Huge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's actually a very good play for people who are looking to buy down there. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think about this yen? I mean, it's still hanging up there. Do you think you get a shot that we get I, a, a stronger yen? No, I think, well, yeah, yeah, I think the yen can get stronger. Yeah, I think the U.S. dollar yen right now is definitely, it's going to start to be in a bear trend, I believe, for at least, I think, the next couple of weeks, you know, especially because we don't have anything with the trade deal thing once again, you know, right. so I think that's going to start to thwart things with that. You know, it's going to start to make the, the yen stronger. And, the, and I think the dollar index is going to start to get heavy as well, especially if we do get a lift in the pound. Like the pound right now is wedging. It's going to either go up or it's going to go down, you know. And we could still see a correction down to a buck 26, but I don't think it's going to go lower than that. I think it's got a solid base and the bulls want to run with that one still. Yeah, it seems that the pound definitely wants any kind of deal done. I, I, that's that's it seems like every time they're close to a deal whatever that deal is the pound wants to run and it runs pretty good strong meaning mm -hmm. get, getting strong you know so we're on like three years of uncertainty right. which yeah. is remarkable yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> there's a little bit of clarity going on with the pound now a little bit yeah the pounds are saying let me loose I'm gonna be fine mm -hmm. okay you know I right. you know I, I it's so strange that the pound is even at 128 because, you know, over the course of years, you've always had, you know, 156. I remember when Pound was sure. 211. It was like, oh, my God, you go to London and, like, forget it. You're living in a shoebox. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure. You know who might be set up for a run, too, is, like, you guys got to think about this. What happens if they start to finally come to some little bit of a medium ground for the Brexit issue. And then we look at the, the numbers in Europe. You know, everyone's looking at a slowdown in Germany, but they equate that to the economy and the consumer base. What they're not equating it to is the fact that there's been a big turnover in the manufacturing industry, in, in uh, especially Germany and throughout the EU. Their transition to like electric cars to begin with is they're losing employment because they don't need the cars are being made differently. There's not as many parts, there's not as many components, it's more modular, sure. even servicing. There's, there's a whole bunch of jobs now that are being displaced, and they have a lot of corners that they don't have to cut. Oh, Listen, folks, Teddy, Take first care. off, thank you so much, man. You have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking yeah. with you next uh, Wednesday. Okay, guys, thank have a good you. one, thanks. Stay right there, folks, Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain 